In artistic gymnastics, athletes are asked to present various kinds of programs. Then the final score is calculated as the total score of each program. But why is this? Because each program allows the testing of a different kind of ability. Why are we opening with this? Because when we are designing the assessment phase of our teaching and learning experiences, an important element is choosing the most appropriate test to observe the intended learning outcomes we are aiming at. But how can we choose the most appropriate test? What does most appropriate mean? It means more appropriate in relation to the type of intended learning outcomes. Remember, every time we are in front of a designing crossroads, we need to remember that our goal is represented by the intended learning outcomes. When deciding which test should I choose for my students, the best test is the one that allows me to effectively observe the intended learning outcome I want to evaluate. So, if we use the reviewed version of a Bloom's Pyramid to categorize the different kinds of intended learning outcomes, we notice that there are some tests that are more appropriate to observe certain learning outcomes than others. Tests, furthermore, can be categorized on the basis of the way they cross the type of stimulus they suggest with the type of the response that is required from students. I can choose a test where the stimulus is very close, very limited, and the answer, the response is very restricted. For example, quizzes. They are characterized by closed questions that can be well identified with a minimum amount of ambiguity and the answers are already defined. A completely opposite situation would be having both the stimulus and the response in an open form. For example, in an oral discussion. The teacher simply gives indication of the topic and the subject of the discussion, managing the dynamics in real time. Another case which sits in between the other two is the so-called semi-structured test, where the stimulus has some element of a structuring and limitation, a short guided essay, for example, presents a closed stimulus because I provide a sequence of topics or aspects that need to be treated. It implies, though, the potential for fairly open response and answers, because the development of each part is left to the creativity of the student. A peculiar area is the situation where the stimulus is completely open and the response is completely limited, which is the so-called pseudo-test. A typical case is the rhetorical question, where the content of the question suggests what the answer could be. For example, are we sure that this can be done? Hmm? So, let's say, we want to observe intended learning outcomes regarding the remembering area, for example. In this case, it could be easier or more effective to use tools like multiple choice quizzes and so on. When, on the other end, I go up on the Bloom's Pyramid, where I find new dimensions connected to application and analysis. I have to go up also in terms of degrees of openness of the answer expected from the student. In this context, for example, guided short essays, lab experiences or tests, where the stimulus is relatively closed but the answer is relatively open, could be more appropriate. Likely, when I wanted to observe intended learning outcomes that pertain to the higher part 
of the pyramid connected to the creation and the evaluation, I will definitely need to go towards a test where both stimulus and response are as open as possible. Projects, open essays, no structured discussions. In this way, I can give space to the expression of those skills of evaluation and creation that I want to observe. Let's not forget that we have a wealth of knowledge coming from the digital world. So when we are thinking about a world product, we are asking to our students, we are really range beyond the traditional typologies. For example, we could use concept maps, which are very interesting ways of, of structuring knowledge, especially when it's about processes and methods. But we could also ask them to represent concepts of information and methods combining multiple media. There are many online tools that allow the creation of multimedia posters with a system of links that can be very articulated. Or we could also suggest the use of digital sharing tools like some suites available online that allow the creation of digitally shared documents. This makes it easier for teachers to map the individual contribution to the construction of the final outcome. In order to facilitate the management of tests or quizzes, even complex ones, could be useful to use digital tools like students' response systems. They allow the organization of tests and quizzes online, the monitoring in real time of the answers and the possibility to have reports about the activities. Music